Hello, good evening, everybody, and welcome to a much belated new edition of the uh, World's Best Cricket Club. And the man we've got as our guest tonight is there on screen. I'm just going to minimise the, the sound of Simon Man because you've heard it so many times. But actually, to say he's rifled the ball for four is appropriate because this is what this man did many times, not only in that pose there, but, but also smashing it through the covers as well. I think, for me, Wayne Larkins was a stand-and-deliver man. And this uh, shot, of course, is one of his most famous moments when he hit the winning runs in a test match in the West Indies, a team that hadn't been beaten for about 10 years by England. And uh, it was a famous victory in Jamaica, which Wayne Larkins, known as Ned. So I'm going to introduce him. Here he is. Ned, speak to us, otherwise we won't see you. And welcome to the world's best cricket club. Hello, Yoz. It's nice to speak to you. And nice to see you after such a long time. Yeah, I don't know how long it is. I mean, you know, we played together at, at Durham in the 90s, but early 90s. But, yeah, but we haven't sort of seen each other much since, have we? Because we've no. just crossed paths. I, I can't afford to go racing. <laughs> And I know that's where you uh, that that's where you can be found on an average day. Is that true? Yes, very true. Yes, went to Royal Ascot and, and G glorious Goodwood and the local tracks around there: Warwick, Stratford, Worcester. Yeah, you must um, know them intimately. Well, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. And, just and, and are you up or down at the moment? Down. Oh, I'm sorry to hear Quite that. Nice. I'm not a professional, Yoz. No, you're just you're just having fun, aren't you? And then away, that's you, isn't it? To a T. I mean, having fun. I know you've got a glass of red wine there. I'm going to toast you with my neck oh. on actually tonight. So uh, cheers and great that's to see it. you again. Cheers. Nice I'm to sorry see we're you. not. I'm sorry we're not meeting in person, but we've got lots of um, uh, our friends on with us tonight who can share our conversation and, and they've got questions yeah. for you as well. I'm just going to read out something first. Um, it's from. Uh, one of my books, um, this book that I wrote, and um, it's just a, an account of an experience, just to sort of sum you up to, to the viewers, many of who will have seen you bat, obviously, and some of whom won't have. But I just want to read out uh, a little section from uh, this book uh, describing a moment when I batted with you. So um, this is, um, I, I've described you uh, perhaps unfairly as an enigma capable of taming the world's fastest bowlers yet strangely vulnerable to the innocuous dobber. And his, his, that's your, relaxed posture in the dressing room, puffing away in a corner, laughing infectiously, concealed a fierce competitiveness, which only properly surfaced against the most demanding bowlers, or, and I probably put this in brackets, or after the eighth pint, that was a bit unfair. He was an immense admirer of Gordon Greenwich. Well, you can tell us if that's true. Um, with all his skill and panache, but only a smidge of his heart, the difference between Greenwich and Link, well, is just the sort of record in a way, but not the, the ability. So um, there's a description of a game here, which I actually can't find. Yeah, right. So um, we're playing Leicester. We're at the Grace Road ground. Uh, the, the delay of uh, rain has delayed the start of the game. And eventually we go out to bat 5.30, Durham against Leicestershire. The Durham openers had to survive a few overs in the evening against the Leicester fast bowler, David Mills, rampaging down the hill at Grace Road. Milnes took an early wicket and with five minutes to go, tore at Larkins. The first two deliveries fizzed close to his jaw and thwacked into the keeper's gloves, still rising. Now, the reason I mention this is because I was at the other end. I, the night watchman, stood quaking in my boots at the other end. The third ball was another flesh-seeking lifter. Larkins swayed back and thrashed it past cover. The fourth ball spat from a length and nearly took his hand off. The fifth grazed his right shoulder. Certain he had Larkins for the taking, Milnes sought a fuller length with the last the ball, expecting a rattle of furniture. Larkins launched it through the covers into the boundary boards with such force it ricocheted back to the bowler. Walking up the wicket at the end of the over in shock, I expected some adrenaline-induced comment or morsel of advice. All he said was, piece of piss, and walked back. Very true. 
I hope you don't mind me reading that, that out. Very, very um, true. Actually. It was a, I don't know if you remember that uh, that day, but I do. it was I a do. juicy wicket. And Mills was not slow. And you just wow. made him look like cannon fodder almost. I mean, the odd spitting delivery, but you just had that. And I think, and I'm just going to say to you this, I honestly believe, you know, we watched Joss Butler bat and we admire his incredible repertoire and skill and timing. Well, I think you had, you know, all the ingredients that he's got, probably more than anyone else I've seen play. Maybe De Villiers would be the other one. But yeah. you, know, you are in that category, actually. Where, where, you know, and so, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry I'm, if I'm making you blush, maybe not, but where did you get that from? Because you had, an, I, I mean, it's a natural ability to hit the ball. So, and it made, you made it look so easy. Well, I think it was just being coached the right way. I mean, them days, I was coached the basics by Dennis Brooks at Northampton. And it, it just, he made me be the person I was. And I, and I say it all the time. And Dennis Brooks, he was a judge in the Northampton County Courts, actually. But he was a, a coach at Northampton. And he just, as long as he got my basics right, he's like, watch the ball. If it's up there, hit it. And the, but the timing of it, and it, and it, it comes, that comes all together if you coach the right way. Is if you got the basics and someone bowls a bad ball, and he, he never curtailed me. Mm. If it's a half volley, hit it. If they're bowling too quick, uh, too quick boy, just watch the ball, just watch it. And that's basic coaching up. But, with it, but then, you see, that was where the helmets as well, without the helmets. Mm. And um, it, it gives you great confidence with that background of coaching. And he always say to me, if you watch the ball, it's not going to hit you on the head. And that's... Uh, and, but the you have it on the head from the coaching. Yes, you were. Oh, I, was. I thought someone asked me a question. No, no but that, I said, Were you ever hit on the head? Well, not really. The only time I'll get on the head was when I wore a helmet. How funny! Yeah, I never, I never got hit on the head until I wore a helmet. Mm. But that was Ezra Mosley at Northampton. Uh, he was playing for uh, Wales uh, for the Morgan, yeah, for the Morgan. Well, Welsh, cross. <laughs> but he, we was playing. We was playing for the Morgan at Northampton, mm. and uh, he bowled me a slow bouncer. Mm. So I hit it. I hit it before, then he bowled me a quick one. Oh. And it hit me straight on the badge, the Tudor rose of the helmet, I had, and it went for two leg bars. Through my wicket, but you see, I wouldn't have done that if I had a helmet. Mm. Mm. I'd have been watching that go through it. You liked fast bowling, didn't you? I mean, Mark Nicholas said I should introduce you actually as the man who, uh, when uh, it was the last game of the season in 1985, and North Ants uh, were playing Hampshire, and Hampshire had to win to win the championship against Middlesex, actually over Middlesex, and uh, he set Mark set you like a reasonable target, about 250 to win. And uh, the Hampshire blokes were a bit sort of unsure about whether it, was, it declared too early. And it was proved to be the case when Malcolm Marshall came charging in and you hit his first ball of the innings. Where did you hit it? Well, I hit it over extra cover into the flats at the old <laughs> over, over extra cover for six, Malcolm Marshall. Right in the flats, yeah. <laughs> at the old ground at Southampton, it yeah. was flats. There was all sorts going on over there. There were glasses and plates and everywhere. How did you do that? Uh, I mean, what's in your mind? I mean, was it in your mind? I mean, how, how do you have the speed of re reaction to do that? Um, I, I, I think it's down to I want to beat him. Right. It, it's the attitude. He's Malcolm Marshall and I want to beat him. And I had that, well, that's why it was. I mean, but we're chasing runs as well. He set us a good target. 
Mm. It's a very good target, but he, um, but I just want to take out the best. And that was, that was the story of my life. I always wanted to take out the best. And, and in but a way, I suppose. Uh, ability, that's just yeah. who I was. I guess I I suppose, yeah. I mean, I, so I suppose in a way, what you're sort of saying is that you were almost motivated more by, you know, the top players. And actually, and I think, as I mentioned in that little passage I read, that, that you know, kind of anonymous dobber was almost your worst enemy, really, for you. Well, he was, yeah. Well, he was, but yeah, he was. You're not talking about yourself, though. <laughs> well, thank God, I I didn't have to bowl to you too much. I mean, I, well, I suppose I did actually for for Norvat, but and, and luckily I played with you in the end. It was much nicer playing with you. I mean, it's horrible. You don't have any idea how horrible it is to bowl at somebody like you who makes your best delivery. The only other person that I think I bowled at who made my best delivery look ordinary was Martin Crow. So I just couldn't seem to, and, and actually Gower as well. Um, those three, you know, with someone like Viv Richards, you still had a chance to get him out somehow. But I don't know, you just you just made anything that you tried feel like a pop gun, just sort of pathetic, really. And you had that sort of... No, but don't run yourself down. That was meant as a flippant comment. No, I, I, I know. But I mean, it's like, it's like whenever I say to boys, you love batting, didn't you? And he said, I love batting against you. But, uh, you know, I, it's, it, is, it is an intimidating feeling when you have a player up there at the other end who you know can take you apart. Were yeah. you ever conscious of that? I was, yeah. And I used to get the feeling of that. Did you? I did, yeah. And, and against a lot of top quality bowlers, I used to get that feeling that they didn't want to bowl to me. And that's when you take advantage. A lot, a lot of top quality bowlers all around the world. They didn't like bowling to me. So you do take advantage of that. But if they get you out, I'll get you next time. That attitude, which mm. I think now we've got that attitude now. Mm. Um, yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you what you think about the modern game. I mean, part of the reason actually for getting you on tonight was, you know, just after Goodwood, glorious Goodwood, which makes always makes me think of you actually. But, but also, um, it's the start of the hundred tomorrow, and I can imagine you would have really relished playing in that. Well, I'd love to play. I'd love to, but you got to remember the day I played. There was fifty over game, the old Gillette Cup, the old Benson Edges games. And also the Sunday League, so we all we all had experience of the of the one day game, but then it's diminished to twenty overs. I mean, I mean that but that would have been a joy. Not mm. just me, but a lot of other players would have absolutely reveled in it. Mm. What I don't understand is why can't they play all formats? Mm. Or too much cricket. Well, you just want to play the game, don't you? Whatever it is, whether it's a test match, 50 over, 40 over, 20 over. You just want to play the game and be successful. I went into the game to be successful. Not in one format. I just wanted to be successful. Mm. And you wanted to play, you know, every game you could, I guess. Well, well that's what I'm saying. Mm. Every game. Yeah. Can you recall um, the most number of days you played in a row? Well, it was seven days a week. Mm. County cricket was seven days a week, non stop. Mm. Um, coming to the amount of games I played in a row, I don't really know, really, but it was seven days a week. And on a day off, would you still want to go in and and hit the ball, you know, in the nets. I mean, were you a keen? No, I was having a Sunday lunch on a day off. Sunday lunch. Sunday lunch, a few beers. Yeah. That enjoyed yourself. Mm. Or a Tuesday, it might be a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You just, because well, if you're not playing, you don't want to go in the nets. You just played consecutive days of 
I can say three weeks, mm. not stop gripping. The last thing I want to do is practice me off drive mm. or field in practice. You just enjoyed those days off mm. with the boys as well. Mm. So in a way, are you saying that, do you think that, because I think one of the reasons why players want time off now is because of the intensity of the game partly i mean it is a, a more intense game it's more analyzed and poured over and covered and you know lots of replays and all that but i think the other reason is practice i think practice now has become an addiction and everyone feels you know the batsmen feel that if they haven't hit 200 balls they're not ready to play and they kind of get conditioned into feeling like that which you're saying perhaps is a mistake and that actually it's better to be clear your head of the game and you know, come to the game fresh and right, a little bit of practice. I mean, you probably had a few throwdowns by the boundary, did you? Always, yeah. I used to try and make holes in the boundary boards. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the thing is, and, and them days, it, it started to come into it at the end of my career. It started running around the field before a game. The game starts at 11 and I'm I've been told to get in at nine o'clock and do all these warm-ups and run around the field. But if you're playing seven days a week for a monotonous amount of time, who wants to be doing that? I, mean, I remember Mike Proctor. He came into the... Uh, Lammy was captain and he brought Mike Proctor in. And um, he was getting us there at nine o'clock in the morning. We already played like two weeks, 21 days of cricket. Mm. And he wants us to go around and um, run around the field and do warm-ups. I got in the dressing room and I was like, I'm in the shower. Feels like I've scored 50 or 60 already. And I just didn't, I didn't appreciate it. I didn't like that at all. And, and I told him so, and Lammy was too happy, but it, it was unnecessary. And mm. I think now, when they're saying they're playing all this too much cricket, but you see their training regime, mm. and they're all doing these push-ups. Well, that's what's happened to Stokes, isn't it? I mean, Ben Stokes, he's done too much. Mm. Just calm it down a minute. His knees are gone. Because, all right, fair play to the bloke. He's 100% committed. But someone should have told him, just calm down a minute. Mm. Just ease it off a bit. And I, th I think that's bad management. Interesting. Actually, Trevor Bayliss did say that to him. And he did listen for a bit. But I'm not sure if he's necessarily uh, heeding, heeding it now. So... What, what do you think of the modern game when you watch, you know, Butler or Stokes or, you know, Jason Roy, Johnny Bairstow? What, what do you think of, of, of what you're seeing? Um, well, I, I, I don't... It all depends what game they're playing. I mean, test matches, I don't think... Butler's not a wicketkeeper. Butler's not a, bat, a test match batsman. Jason Roy is not a test match batsman, but they made the name. I mean, in one day cricket, mm. mainly T20. Um, but Josh Butler, I mean, and he played so many test matches as a wicketkeeper. I mean, I, I just can't get my head around that. I mean, I call him symbols because it was ridiculous when you. Your focal point around a test match is to have the best wicketkeeper because you're going to win your games. Every time a wicketkeeper, the best wicketkeeper you've got will win your matches. Every time. But as a batsman, yeah, seven. But he wasn't good enough to keep wicket to bat seven. Jason Roy, uh, Jason Roy, not a is not a test match player. What about Bairstow? How do you, how do you see his batting? I, I think he is a test match player. 
without a doubt. What's the difference? But, but then again, he was a good keeper. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. When you got folks who's sitting in the side, you know, oh, best though, he's a, he's a test group. He could play any game. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a bully, isn't he? Actually, he's amazing. Oh, that's what you want in a side, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, looking back at your career, then, um, what what were the kind of what were the highlights? Was that were the highlights playing for England in that uh, Test match in Jamaica? Was it you know highlights with North Ants winning cups? Um, you know what, or you know personal milestones? What what really kind of do you look back on with the greatest of sort of pre pleasure? Well, I think winning the first. 1976, winning the first trophy for Northamptonshire. That uh, the Gillette Cup, the old Gillette Cup, 60 overs when you're finishing a game off in the dusk. And that was that was my big highlight, and I moved on from that. Um, and it and it stood with me for a long time, and I wanted to win more. I was only 20. 223 of them. Um, but regarding the, but we went on to win, well, not to say win, but we went on to play a lot more cup finals after that, but we should have won more than what we did. It was, that was disappointing. Um, but to end my career was the hitting the winning runs of Jamaica, not just hitting the winning runs, but it was to First time we won in Jamaica or West Indies for a long, long time. Mm. That was a big thing. Yeah. And, and I love playing with that team as well. It was a great team. Gucci and Mickey Stewart got the, the right attitude in the team. That was the moment, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. But mm. I think 76 was the one. Right. Within mm. the first trophy for Northamptonshire, and it it gave everyone a lot of confidence. Because you're um you're sort of a Midlands boy through and through. Are you from Bed is it right? Are you from Bedfordshire originally? No, I'm from Bedfordshire, yeah, but it was Roxton on the A1, the black cat roundabout. I'm sure you've been past there many as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And um and you went on to play for Bedfordshire after you finished with Durham, didn't you? Yes, I did, yeah. It's like a full circle. Mm. I turned a full circle and that was I played four years for Bedfordshire. Yeah, right. And uh, that was a real defining moment for me. Because I've been all round, done the county, done the England, and just come back and play for Bedfordshire. That was lovely. You, you hold a unique record, don't you? Um, scored 100 against, well, not unique, but a rare record. Scored 100 against every other county. But presumably, so... Did you ever score 100 against Durham? You probably did. No. Not not as a minor county, no. So not as a minor county, no. But you, but you scored 100 against North Ants playing yeah. for Durham. So you kind of pretty much, you got the 17, but you're just missing the 18th. I'm not coming back, Yoss. No, okay. Oh, it's a shame. I'm not going to come back and you know, do that. You know, actually, my, funnily enough, one of my memories of you um, isn't necessarily with the, with the bat, although there were many memories with the bat. My, one of my memories is that you loved... Um, not really doing much warm ups except at the end of the warm up, the fielding practice, getting hold of your trusty Stuart Surridge bat and hitting the ball from one end of the ground as high as you could to us standing at the other end. And I've never known anyone be able to hit the ball so high from a sort of standing start to just whack it literally into orbit and like broken fingers trying to catch the bloody things as well. No, there wasn't. That's practice. Like well, these days, that's and how often do you actually get? How often do you actually get a catch like that? About once a year. Well, that might be the most important catch. <laughs> True. Yeah. That might I, be I, the one that wins the game. Yeah, but nobody hit it ever that high. Apart from, <laughs> I think, I think the only time I've ever seen the ball hit as high as that was Shida Freedy once. It, 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 uh, in an indoor game at Cardiff, he hit, it, he hit the roof. Anyway. Um, oh. but, the, but, the, but that's practice, you see. Yeah, yeah. You always practice. 
It's no good hitting dollies and just hitting 50 yard catches because you do that every day. Mm. Practice should be doing things that you, you're this the unexpected catch that comes up. If you practice it, you're going to catch it. It's no good just hitting balls up like <laughs> willy nilly. Mm. You got to make the difficult look easy. That's yeah. proper practice. So we've talked a little bit about North Ants. We've talked about um, England. Um, you know, there's lots, obviously, other, other things to talk about. Uh, but I'll let the um, members ask you some questions in a sec. What, how about Durham? Look back at your four years at Durham. Um, how, how, do you, how do you look back at that, that period? And I suppose you must like the fact that, uh, you know, that Durham is so successful now, or was, anyway. Well, I think me and yourself i mean i look I look back at those times it was a great family atmosphere but also very competitive the family atmosphere came in because we played at so many outgrounds darlington hartlepool mm. chesley street south, south um uh, stockton <clears throat> yeah stockton yeah, yeah. Well, that made it a lovely, well it, well, it was just lovely to go out there and play professional cricket. Mm. Although yeah. we played it very, very seriously, but it was afterwards, it was such a lovely environment to be in. And it's, and it's I, I'm very proud to be involved with that, to see how they've come, mm. to, to be... A success. I know they've had a few problems, but I'm sure Beefy will sort it out. <laughs> yeah. but, How much do you see Beefy now? Um, I saw him, the last time I saw him was the Ashes get-together down at the Oval. That's the last time I saw him. But he, he's always telling me, you've got to come up and see me. You've got to come up and do it. Uh, no, that's... I'm living down in Warwickshire. It's, it's difficult. Logistics are difficult. And I've got a few things to do. And, but, uh, but I'm so proud of that, uh, that county. For what, not just what I've done, and what you did as well. I mean, to get them where they are. I mean, you see the, the one day international there against South Africa. I mean, that's fantastic. Mm. And to look when me and you were there, mm. where they've come. Mm. I mean, that's fantastic. Mm. And it was a, a family atmosphere, wasn't it? It was, I mean, I remember that first game, actually, uh, at the race course in Durham and kind of, we were still in the pub at 6am the, the, after the, winning the match against Lancashire. The follow, you know, there was a sort of lock-in and there was a real kind of buy-in from the community to that season. And I think it really got the, the season going. And uh, it's amazing that, you know, Woody, actually, I don't know how much you know of Woody, but, yeah. I've had a bit to do with him. I mean, he's a, he's a sort of, in a way, sort of almost uh, encapsulates the area because his enthusiasm, his fun, his skill, you know, his desperate passion is fantastic. Well, that's what came across to us, like me and you and the other players, like uh, Polly, Paul Parker. Yeah. It came across that way. There's the passion around them. So we've got to perform. Mm. We've got to do it. We've got to perform because of that passion around us. I mean, I, 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 it was wonderful. One of the four years, it was just gorgeous for me. I loved every minute of it. Mm. I really did. And you got Paul Collingwoods that was around us at the time. And look where they've come on. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Harmy Har Har as well. It was, it was around a bit. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I missed a few names there. Oh, no, no, it's fine. I mean, you know, Paul Collin was a good example because he, he actually, I think he made his debut against his North Ends, didn't he? You didn't yeah. play it. Did you play in that game? Yeah, I did. Did I? I don't know. Um, maybe it was a year know. after. Might have been the year after he'd retired. I'll look it up in a minute. Anyway, listen, great. L lovely to have you on. Um, so let's get the uh, the members... Who, who, we've got a variety of 
members from all over the world. Uh, probably most of them are English today, uh, but we have got some Indian and uh, some American, American members in this club. So, uh, Norts, what do you think? Time to open. Yeah, the- yeah, we got we got a couple we got a couple of hands up. I'm sure more. Uh, I'm going to open the batting. Actually, I'm going to ask okay, him great. to unmute. I'm going to bring in Mr. Paul Morley, who's always got a glass of wine with him. Has he? Is he going to hold it up? There you go. Bingo. I'm bringing him on. So Paul's the first to open the bat in. Well, I've lost it now. Hi, Wayne. Hi, Simon. Can you hear us, Wayne? Yeah. Hello. Hi, mate. All right? Yeah, good. Thank you. Very, very good. Um, you like you're in a vineyard, actually. Um, it's, it, he's a vine, actually. I'm on my roof he terrace, does. which which has got a vine on it, but... Um, <laughs> There's not a lot of uh, not a lot of grape activity. You could have said you were in the south of France or something. I could have done, couldn't I? Yeah. No, Can you say that again? That was quite nice. Just a producer said, "I'm on my roof terrace." <laughs> on my roof terrace. Oh, roof terrace. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we digress. Um, yeah, go on. Thanks ever so much for joining us, Wayne. It's great, great to, to listen to your to your stories. Um, yeah, I, I, I must admit, I didn't see a huge amount of you playing. I, I remember. Um, I think I would have been about eleven. Uh, when that Jamaica Test match took place, I remember hearing about it on BBC Breakfast News, and, and I was just getting into cricket at the time. And I think I saw you play once, um, which was in '92. I think uh, with Simon actually at Trent Bridge. I, I'm from Nottingham originally, and went to the Sunday League game. I think you, you played um, both of you played in that match in '92. Um, I think it's probably fair to say you're 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 a white ball cricketer before the, the phrase was invented, um, from from what I can recall, and obviously the stories we've heard tonight. Question is, if you were a young you know, twenty something, just making your way into the game now. Um, where would your priorities be with all, all the money that's around for for franchise cricket? And is that the route that you would pursue? Um, given a bats being a batsman of your ilk, or would you still have that desire to to want to play Test cricket as well? I know you talked about all formats earlier, but we do see people kind of making those decisions now. Where it seems like people are going down one route or the other. What would your, what where would you go if you were if you were twenty something now? Well, if I was 20-something now, it'd be test match cricket all day long. Yeah. Refreshing. If I can play that, if I can play test match cricket with with my attitude, you could play all, all games. Yeah. If you can play test match cricket, I'm not talking about the big, the Jeffries and the Jeffrey Hall. <laughs> I'm not talking about that, but I think if if, if you can... If you can command Test match cricket and be a top player in Test match cricket, you can do most things. Yeah, I guess the way England have gone now with, with so basketball, that would be my, that would be yeah. my priority. Then I I'd guess try, basketball would have been right up your street, wouldn't it? Actually, <laughs> well, it, well, I love Test match cricket. Yeah. I, I just, I think if you if you play a Test match, you've done it. Yeah, but it doesn't mean to say you can't play other forms. Um, I would, but just look at my career. You know, I've scored near what 59 first class hundreds, but you look at my one day career, I, I don't know whether I still hold the, the one day hundreds, but I used to, like the 50 overs and 40 overs and, and 60 overs. I mean, I think if, if, if you can command. The test match arena, and you've got the ability and the mental ability, you can play all sorts of games. I guess it's a question. Uh, oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, I guess people tend to get pigeonholed a bit nowadays, don't they, batsmen? From an early stage, I mean, you talked about Jason Roy earlier on, and I think I agree with you in that, you know, from what we saw of him in test matches, you know, he's, he's not really cut out for that, but more and more people are getting, seem to be getting pigeonholed as one or the other um, without really being given a, a shot perhaps across all formats and, and arguably a question is, you know, do you think you might have been, if you were around in this day, pigeonholed as a white ball cricketer, maybe not not got as many many opportunities in the test side? So don't know whether that's well, an unfair unfair. No, no, it's not an unfair question at all. The way I was treated in test match cricket, I might have gone that way, definitely. Yeah. But I don't think you get treated in test match cricket like I did in my day. I mean, test match cricket is sort of, you can make a couple of few bad mistakes and get away with it. Mm. Net, 
if, if I played a bad shot in test, uh, test match cricket in my day, you get a slap on the wrist mm. and be sent in the corner with a dump sound. <laughs> but now you can get away with it. Yeah. That is a total difference. Yeah. Um, but, but, but still, don't, test match cricket is a proper game of cricket. That's what I say. But don't get me wrong. I mean, I mean, look at Josh Butler. He he couldn't he couldn't make it as a Test match cricketer. But they played him in the wrong. He shouldn't be keeping it. Here. But he goes in the white ball cricket, and he's a superstar. But is that is that what you want to be known for? I think you've got to be known for as a Test match cricketer. Make your name in Test match cricket. Well, that's yeah. that's my view. Brilliant. No, thank you. Appreciate your answer. Thank you very much. Look at Joe Root. Great, great question, Paul. I mean, look at Joe Root, but but Joe Root's obviously you know multi-format. I mean, the only thing I'd say as, as a sort of counter to your point is that <clears throat> um, you can only make it as a Test match cricketer as sort of one of. 14 or 15 in your country and you know you yourself should have had a, a more sort of successful test career than perhaps you did but you know that you get dropped and you're back to county cricket and there's a big drop between the two now nowadays with t20 franchise cricket ipl or cpl or whatever big bash you can shine at a at a higher standard and earn more more players can shine than just those 13 who get selected for their country. It, it, it attracts and en enables the opportunity for a lot more players to be successful. Well, they're not good enough, are they? Half of them to play test match cricket. Oh, okay. So they're good, they're good to smack it out of the park like a baseball shot. But mm. you, but you, yeah, where you don't think that is, down. that's and not they, proper cricket then, in your view? No, I don't think it is. Well, you stand there like a baseball player. Mm. How is that cricket? Mm. We have another question. Andy's here, ready. Ready to roll? Yeah. Of course, it's I've said it's entertaining. It's all entertaining. Good evening, Wayne. Evening, evening Simon. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Just a couple of quick questions, if I can. I, I started watching test cricket I think probably about the same sort of time as Paul did that, that, that West that well it was Australia 89 and then that West Indies series in 1990 I think it was um I just wondered Wayne what what it was like to you know be on tour and with Graham Gooch and it, he, he was quite known for quite a sort of regimented approach and with your sort of propensity to for fun I just wonder what it was like for you and under him on that tour and my other question was just around how you think you might cope if you were a cricketer these days with social media, um, everyone having camera phones following you around, that sort of thing. How you cope with the as a modern day player? Well, it was very interesting because the first question, uh, Gucci and Mickey Stewart, they were the two. And we went to Lillishaw before we went to the West Indies. And no one had heard of that. We're all going to Lillishaw. What? what? Yeah, we're all going there for two months. So we went to Lillishaw for two months. And they had us, the batsman, Devon Malcolm, bowling off 20 yards, full power. We all got all the gear on and helmets and guards and everything else, and all the chest pads and that was where it all started, I think. The Gooch and Stewart regime made it all like they are now. No one's scared. They're so much prepared. But that was the start of it. And um, apart from, well, apart from David, David Gower didn't enjoy the uh, regime in Australia. They got, you know, you got fun out of it. There was him and Beefy flew over and him and it was a done thing. It was every time he went to Australia, he went to Barossa Valley and had a few days down the Barossa Valley. But Gucci and Mickey Stewart, they blocked that. 
<laughs> that's where David Gower went on the uh, Tiger Moth. Yeah, yeah, it, it, he sort of fell out with everybody, and he went on the Tiger Moth. And mm. but um, yeah, the, the, it was it was strict, but I think it was a great regime. I loved it. I really did, and I think they've done a great job, as it's proved. But, but as far as what was the other question? It's how, how you sort of uh, cope in the modern day with oh, the mod camera phones, social oh, media, that, all that sort of thing. I would absolutely love it. He loves it. The bloody show off. He's oh, doing yeah. dancing on his Instagram the other day. No, I would. <laughs> I would absolutely love it. I really would. I reckon you get in a lot of trouble, actually. I was going to say. At the moment, at the moment, you've got complete freedom. You can do what you like, can't you? <laughs> With, within reason. <laughs> yeah. But, but the I, thing think is, that might have, I think it might have clipped your wings a bit, that. <laughs> but the thing is, having a licence to play every shot you like, we didn't have that in our day, Yoss. That's true. No, true. We didn't have that in our day. So, so you, you alluded to earlier to your sort of, uh, let's say, mistreatment as a test player. Can you just elaborate on that a little bit? Mistreatment? Well, not mistreatment, but you felt you were treated unfairly, you said. Well, I was. Well, I was. I mean, I was playing. I used to, um, I used to get picked. I bring Peter Willie in this same equation. Mm. We would play Australia. They were struggling against Australia. Me and Peter Willie. We're in, then we're facing Lily Thompson, like all the past, all these things are flying around their ears. You can leave your extra cover drive in the dressing room. And then the next year, there'd be Sri Lanka or India, like the old days where I'm talking about. They didn't have any goals, they were little medium pace swingers. And we didn't even get a look in. The following year, West Indies are over it. <laughs> With, you know, I, 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 well, you know, you can't get your head round it. Marshall, Holding, Roberts, Croft, Garner. I mean, they're struggling. Well, Peter Willick won't like the air coming. Never got a chance against the Dibbly Dobbly song. Yeah, that was, you know, I don't want, I'm not going to mention names, counties or anything like that. I don't want to get into trouble, but that's the way it was. So that's why, that's one of the reasons I went to, uh, on the Rebel Tour. Because what am I doing, man? All, all I'm going to do is play against the best bowlers in the world and not get a chance against the rest. In a way, that was my point about, I, look, I totally take your point about Test Cricket. I love Test Cricket too, but I do think that the T20 franchise idea has given more opportunities to players who perhaps couldn't get a chance to play Test Cricket or didn't succeed at it than at it's least a player below, which is still quite good, good standard. <clears throat> but it's not the right but format. Because they're not good enough, probably. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. There we have another question coming in. Okay, please. Yeah. Another cool. question. It's... Uh, have you got another? Have you got wine there, Mister Ian Wigston? You another one with a glass of wine? Yeah, it's, with it's, empty. it's sadly empty, and I've been compelled to stay here because I've enjoyed the, uh, the conversation so much. Uh, Wayne, great to have you with us, and uh, thank you so much for what you said so far. I go back a bit further than some of the others. My first test was sixty-three at Headingley against the West Indies, um, sitting in the coconut shy stands with my dad. Uh, yeah. So, two questions. Um, who was the captain who got the best out of you and why? And looking forward, what do you fear most about the future of the game? Best captain I'm playing under? I would say Mike Brill. Yeah, definitely Mike Brill. Um, I'll tell you a story. There's me and it was. David Bairstow's birthday in Australia, Sydney. So we went out for a beer, a few beers. And uh, probably too many. 
so we went to bed, I don't know, it must have been quite late. And um, all the cars come up and take you to the ground. Of course, me and David Bairstow are um, the, the last to get up and have breakfast. Of course, there's Mike Brearley, the last car. Probably for a reason. Anyway, onto the grounds. We were halfway to the, it was Sydney it was, we were halfway to the ground in Sydney and and he, we stopped at the lights and he went, if you two ever smell like that again, you'll never play for England. That's what he said. And that means something. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I took that, I took that away with me, and so did, so did Bluey. Mm -hmm. uh, but I thought you got to respect, you know. Yeah. You must respect that. Yeah. But who was my best captain? No one ever said it to me again because they just took it for granted. <laughs> yeah. Good man. Anyway, go on. What was the other one? What do you fear most about the future of the game? I fear, I fear most about county cricket. I just, it must remain. And I fear for central contracts taking over and diminishing county cricket. I just want the people who are not playing, uh, not playing test cricket should be playing for their counties. That's a must. Because you get members in, yeah, there's so many. And I've got lots of people that pay membership at county clubs. And they're not seeing the best players. I think it's a disgrace. Good point. Good point. You, can only play, you can only play so many in a test match. And if they're not, there's a squad of, I don't know how many it is, 18 or something, 16, I don't know. If they're not playing, you've got to go and play for your county. Plus the fact, they're going to get great practice and get ready for the next game. You know? And that's what I fear for county cricket. And I think the ECB are doing a terrible job. For that reason. And Sky are not helping either. No. Voting all the one day. And you've got, I think you've got to bring back three-day cricket as well. Four-day cricket is, is not a good advert for members, for counties. Play, if you play three-day cricket, you've got to have, learn the game. You've got to learn the game. Declarations, batsmen have got to, get into position, then you've got to score a target, chase a target. Then even captains come into it as well. The captains have got to set a target. And that makes much more interesting cricket for county cricket. Yeah. Not this four day cricket. Oh, I will get 550. I will get 550. Myself. Yeah. It's, it's got to be a thoughtful game, which is why, you know, Brealey's approach was so brilliant. Um, and one of the things I'm watching with some interest, because I used to live in the States, is just how cricket goes down there and the extent to which some of the stuff that happens over there drifts back over here because it makes money. Yeah, well, well, yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. You've got to make county cricket more interesting. Uh, uh, but, but if you make county cricket three days, as I've already said, mm. You've got to think about the game. You've got to think about it now. He's left the captain's got to do more while he's captain the team. And your batsman, you get to make sure you go into bat the first innings to make sure you've got a decent total, then declare. And then your bowlers have got to defend that total. Because if you bowl badly, you, you could be 100 behind. Uh, the third day. So it's, it's all a, and I think that's gone out of the game. The mental thinking about strategy. Uh -huh. 
I really do. And I, I, I agree. I agree. But thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good question, Ian. And actually, I, you know, I, funnily enough, I like three day cricket as well. I, I agree with you, actually, in many ways. I don't think it necessarily uh, promotes batsmen who want to bat a long time. But then again, your view, Ned, would be that, uh, you know, batting a long time isn't the point. The point is making runs, really. So uh, batting a long time isn't actually that necessary. But I suppose in Test cricket, sometimes you do need to have some people who can bat a long time. But I like the creativity of three day cricket. Sometimes you had to manipulate results and sort of give away a few runs and things like that to kind of create declarations. So it wasn't always ideal. But actually, from an entertainment point of view, yeah, I agree with you. No, I, I agree with the. You've got to declare just to give a few people a few runs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but that didn't happen a great deal, did no, it? No, probably not. But then that only happened for 10 overs. But then you got a great third day. Yeah, yeah. It was about entertainment, I think, and, and finding a way of getting results. So I agree. Well, that's what we're talking about. Well, one yeah. day. Yeah. Like so I'm huge. It's quiz time. Yeah, it's quiz time. Just before we do the quiz, one very more quiz, one very quick question. I, I just, I know you sort, of, you know, do a few dinners and things. So, what, what is your best? What's your favourite story that you tell about your career or you know about yourself? I couldn't tell you. What is it? Is it not allowed to be repeated? Go on, give, give us the give us the clean version. <laughs> Well, uh, it was where I, the story is from my youth. Um, I hadn't been capped, so I hadn't been a regular player. And we were playing Worcester. And we were playing in, uh, we were staying at the, the Gifford. You know the Gifford. Yeah, the Gifford, yeah. God, yeah. Uh, but we were in a great position uh, that makes that third day we were in a great position. Peter Willie, I used to room with a lot. He went to the cathedral to have a look around the cathedral. This is in 1976. He went to the cathedral and he never came back. Now, I'd had a bit of a heavy night the night before. And the next thing I knew was George Sharp ringing the phone rang. Oh, jeez. Do you know what time it was? It's 11 o'clock. Oh, Christ. So I got me all my gear together. Walked out, As I walked over the bridge to the ground at Worcester, which after you know it. And I saw them walking out, I saw the lads walking out on the on the field. <laughs> I thought, well, I, the first thing I did was got the bents and edges out and thought, oh, I'm too late now to make it and make sure everyone's on the field. And I've got a cigarette out and looking over the big. Anyway, I got in the dressing room when there were there was the masseur in there and so I got ready, walked out. Oh, Mushtaq, Mushtaq Muhammad's captain. Um, and we bowled him out. We only needed 130. So they went, we were 30 for three. Gif, Gif was like, it was turning wicked. It was 30 for three. Of course, Mushy was still in there, like reverse sweeping. So that's another thing about reverse. He was like, he was in and I was in at number seven. And we were about 80 for five. Oh, we are. Oh, God. There we are. So we're in, and I try to, try to lap one from GIF. We're straight in there. Caught behind. Anyway, we won the game because Mushy got, Mushtaq got I don't know, 80. Not out. Anyway, in the dressing room afterwards, I thought we won the game, great. So I went and had a shower. 
and I came out the shower, Mushy was giving the team an absolute bollocking. David Steele and Roy Burge and all these people, Safra has the wives giving them up. Then when I come out of the shower, walked through, walked in the dressing room, oh well played, Mushy. He went, oh thanks, Ned. <laughs> Giving the old team an absolute moment. I say, well, I'll play, Ned. Yeah. Uh, well played, Mush. He went, oh, thanks, Ned. And I got away with it. <laughs> How good was that? Oh, I went right to the ground. Yeah. Mm. I tell you what, I wasn't happy after that. Steely, Roy Virgin, they weren't happy after that. I'll tell you. I, bet. I was a bit sent into the. But you, you, I did. You did have a way of, I'm sure, of sort of diffusing tension, actually. So, you know, that's a good story, and um, I can just imagine you, you doing it. Actually, very good. Um, look, let's let's do the quiz because um, it's it's past our time, actually. So, uh, we we do this with everyone. Um, we haven't had one for a while, but we've had about fifty contestants over the years, over the year or two. Um, Ten questions about you. Right, mm -hmm. the best has been Paul Collingwood actually. Paul Collingwood got ten out of ten. Oh, Collingwood! Well, yeah, he did really well. Uh, Alistair Cook was the worst, got four out of ten. <laughs> the only questions he could answer were about sheep. Uh, so, are you ready? And I'm you're ready. not allowed to phone a friend or, you know, ask the audience. I'll so, keep score for you, Simon. Right, I'll keep score. score for me. Thank you very much. So, Norse is going to keep the score. Uh, right, so it starts with a bit of music. And then basically, if you get the answer correct, you get this. He's got it! All right. Okay. And if you get it wrong, you get one of these. Right? All right. And it's sort of... Six or seven is a good score, and obviously 10 is exceptional. So see how you get on. Right, so you ready? I'm ready. Don't take too long over these. Uh, right, because we're running out of time. Okay, question one. What did you make, runs-wise, on your first class debut? Seven. You sure? First class debut? First ever first class match. 177. Oh, no. Nought. Court, <laughs> Court and bold voice. You've obviously erased it from your memory. I have. I was going for the higher one at the end. <laughs> North Ants v Essex, 1972. Nought. That's about right. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. What's the score? Noughts? That's not unsurprisingly, that's noughts out of one. Question two. <laughs> what two Asian great players were playing for North Hans on your first class debut? You've mentioned one of them actually. What yeah, two Fish Asian Bebby. great players were playing for North Hans on your first class debut? Yeah, Fish and Bebby. And who was the other one? Mushrat Alma, Muhammad. He's got it! <laughs> Correct. And you were telling us about Mushtaq's reverse sweeping, weren't you? So he was the... Yeah, but the everyone thinks he's great now, but he was the first one that introduced it into this country. Was he? Yeah. One out of two. Um, did you ever try it yourself at that point? No. I wasn't as good as him. He was quite good, wasn't he? Right. But, he, but that's... But that's but not a lot of people know that. They all think it's all done over there. <laughs> he was the first one that introduced it. Wow. In the originator, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. right, question three is a better question for you. How many did you make in your last first class innings? 103, or might be 102. Well, I'm going to. He's got it! I'm, I'm going to give you that. It's actually 121, but I mean, you know, you've got, oh, I mean, you got 100 I mean. anyway, so that's fine. I'll give you that. Uh, 121. And um, that was your last first class innings, and after that, you retired. What were you doing, man? Well, I don't know. Right. I don't know. I don't okay, well, that, that's two a, out of three. That's a question that we'll have to answer another time. Right. Yeah, we will, yeah. 
Question four. Who dismissed you on your test match debut? First innings and second innings, I think. Lily. Pasco. Yes, Pasco. I'll Pasco. give you half a mark. Half a mark for that. Half a mark for that. Half a mark. Pasco, correct. Lenny Pasco. Yeah. What's that, Norts? 2.5 out of four. Question five. What is your highest first class score? 252. He's got it! That was a half volley on your pads, that, wasn't it? it was, Who again? Yeah. Who, Who against? Good Morgan. Okay, that's not, you don't get a bonus mark. Well, yeah, yeah, come on, make up no. the half No, point. no. You can make up the half point. I can't, I can't. No, sorry. I'm Jeremy Paxman. Uh, right, so that's three and a half out of five. Yeah. Question six, and I think you've already said this actually, so I'm giving this this is an easy one. How many first class hundreds? 59. He's got it! It's that a should be more than that, yours. Well, yeah, I wasn't going to say that. There should be a lot. No, but I don't, I don't mean there should be more than that because I, I, I don't want more. Threw a few away. I've played a lot of first class games if they weren't county. Yeah, the that's county. Eh? For the wrong county? No, they should. I've scored a lot of hundreds around the world, which were first class, but they wiped them all off. Oh my god! Okay, that's another one we need to investigate. Then, wow, well, think, got a lot yeah. of, we've got. We need to do another show and find out all the answers to these other mysterious yeah, questions. Anyway, right? Okay, well done. Four and a half out of six. Sorry, Norts, stolen your thunder. <laughs> right, question seven. How many sixes did you hit in test cricket? Test cricket. One, one. I mean, one. He's got it! Very good answer. You were going well, to tell you that. You started off by saying quite a few, and then you realised it wasn't. There weren't any. No, but I wanted to. Yeah, I can imagine. But that one. That one was at Headingley on an absolute nightmare of a pitch. That's when Rosie got broken ribs and he had to get cart. Brian Rose, he had to get carted up the hospital. It was a nightmare pitch. Anyway, Colin Croft was coming in. I got rid of um, um, Holding, Marshall. <laughs> Uh, Roberts, Colin Croft came in and he was like, it was horrendous, horrendous. No helmets, horrendous. I said to Goji, I walked down to Goji halfway through the yard, I said, I'm going for this. He said, do what you like, because it was unplayable. There was no, at the time, there was no, oh, one for the over, two for the over. They could just bowl one eye. Bill Alley, Roy Palmer was just laughing. Umpires. <laughs> yeah. So I said, so my only to get back to the the answer was I just went for it. Oof. It went straight over Derek Murray. Straight over Derek Murray, straight in the coconut shard. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my only six. I bet Croft wasn't happy after that. No, no, he wasn't. Well, it doesn't make any difference, is it? Still going to go past your ears. <clears throat> anyway, Corey. Well, well done. Anyway, you, you, it's a memorable six, clearly. Yes, um, exactly. Yeah, very good. Okay. Noughts. What's the score? Uh, we are currently sitting at five and a half out of seven. Okay. Not bad. Right. Um, next question. <laughs> question eight. Oh, well, I've already given you the answer to this. So I was going to say, who did you hit over extra cover for six off the first ball of an innings? Well, so it, I, actually, there, there could be a number of people. Well, go on then. Who did you do it to then? It was Malcolm Marshall, but I also did it to Jonathan Agnew. Did you? Yeah. That's why yeah. he's... It went down Grace Road at Leicester. First ball, 
<laughs> it was bouncing down the road after the first ball. They always got the new balls out. He's got it! <laughs> right, well, I'll give you that. I'll give you that answer. That's a good one. Oh, thank you. Sorry, that was a bit of a gimme, really. Um, I forgot that I'd put this question in. <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> what's that? That's... Uh, Six and a half out of eight. Okay, question last, got last two to go. You now, these, these two questions are going to get a picture to give you the answer. So question nine is a bit cryptic, this. What did you and Beefy like to do in the morning to warm up before a match on the outfield? Have a putting competition. My God. I can't believe you got that. He's got it! Right, and believe it or not, hey. it's absolutely true. And I've even got a picture of it, right? You won't believe this, will you? But here is your warm-up. We're having a putting competition. That is how, ladies and gentlemen, that is how Ian Botham <laughs> and Wayne Larkins used to warm up before a match. No business of nets, fielding practice, slipping, catching, or running up and down on those ladders or anything like that. A putting competition with a bat and a ball. Can you send me that picture, please? <laughs> yes. Can you please send me that picture? Yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's oh, good. Wow. <laughs> right, so no, okay. No. So you that's that's he's got a very good answer. Your library. You no, know, it's it's actually out of this um out of this it's out of this book. I, I took this uh, okay. during the Durham years. Oh, okay, oh well, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So final question. What's the art? What's the score? Noughts? Uh, seven and a half out of nine. Pretty good. Doing well. Yeah, doing well. Right. OK. So final question before we all have to go to bed uh, is. I'm just trying to find this question. Right. What did I say in this book were the essential ingredients of your day when you came to the cricket? There were three things that you had to have with you at all times. Your bat, obviously, a bottle of shampoo, and something else. Something else you always had to have with you on a day at the cricket, and it wasn't a cricketing thing. What was it that you had to have? Your bat, a bottle of shampoo, and... Well, can I have some... Ben, a packet of Ben Snedges. He's got it! Correct! An incredible answer. <laughs> And in fact, I mean, you know, I, I have actually got, believe it or not, uh, it doesn't quite show it, but um, this picture here sort of does, oh God, sorry, I'm just trying to um, press a few buttons and I pressed the wrong one. That, th th this is you and the aforementioned Botham celebrating the end of a match at Cardiff, we won. And you yeah. can see there, you can't actually see, the cigarettes are in the picture somewhere. Your bat is done sort of leaning against you. But I quite like yeah. the fact there's a bottle of champagne there. Uh, sorry, a bottle of shampoo. There's a bottle of shampoo. Look at this picture there. It's unbelievable. Bottle of shampoo. Beefy, Beefy's got a pint or something. Not a pint, yeah. There's a mobile phone on charge there, 1992. One of those... Oh, yeah. um, Motorola, that would have been Beefy's. And someone's yeah. razor blade, well, that can't have been yours. Well, it looks like I'm in bed. It does. You're on the physio's couch. Oh, well, that's about right. <laughs> so... There's a razor as well. There's a razor and a, uh, some, like, you know, shaving foam or something. Are oh, we getting shampoo. ready for the night out? Night out, exactly. And, uh, and uh, wherever the cigarettes are, God knows, but you probably smoke them all by then. <laughs> so listen what's the score noughts it is a very decent a very passable eight and a half out of ten really mm. yeah. well i'll tell you what some of those questions were ridiculously easy but some of them were pretty hard and you got the answers you, you're thinking along the same lines as me which is good to hear wow. so Ned, um, and are you all called Ned after the Ned Larkin's character in The Archers, is that right? Correct. The village idiot. Have you ever met him? No, I haven't. No. <laughs> I'll go to sleep with him every night. 
Debbie, where are you? Come on, I, we can hear you in the background. Get on camera, please. So Hello. We can see you. Yeah. Hello. Oh, there's Debbie. Oh, yeah, yeah. How lovely. There she is. The lady who's got us all together tonight. Without your help, it's my life is so oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm so good to see you. Um, without your technology, we would have um, we would have been a lost cause here. So, well, Ned, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, we've all got to go now because it's past our bedtime. It's just your your evening is just beginning. I know it. <laughs> Are you going to make it to the Durham Players Reunion next Friday? Well, I would love to. I'm making plans to do it. Yes. Okay. Good. Are you? Yeah, I'm going. Well, yeah, I'm I'll be there. So the old the old players from Durham 1992 onwards are all uh, gathering together Friday the 12th for some Royal London game at the Chester yeah, exactly. Ground. It'll be, it'll be really nice, hopefully. It would be um, great. Yeah, it'd be lovely to see people actually. So hopefully loads of loads of over, over the old well, players. Can I say up. thanks for the lovely guest as well that was on? For the lovely guest, what Debbie? Yeah, can I thank you to the guests that asked me the questions? Oh, good. Yeah, you mean the the the, the members? The members. Yeah, the members. You now. Well, you're now an official Not member. Yet. You're an honorary member now of the world's best cricket club. But, but can I, yeah, but can I thank them all? Yeah, go for it. Big cheer in and all that. Man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much too. Cheers to you. Cheers to Debs. And yes, cheers, to, cheers to all the members. Um, yes. Back next week with another guest. Don't know who at this point. But I'll find someone. I promise. And. <laughs> Ned and Debs, thank you very much for tonight. And yes. we'll see you hopefully no next week then. Cool. Lovely to see All you. Best, Good night, everybody. Yes. Cheers.